So good evening everybody who joined me on a very sticky night in Suffolk. I think it's probably about 24, 25 degrees but it feels really close at the minute. So I'm in a place called Polestead and um, camping in the camper van just in the little caravan and camping club um, site just, just off to the left there. And I have to say there's not a great deal of um, interest, I say that carefully um, for the people of Polstead, but um, from a photographic point of view um, there's no accessibility to big old mature woodlands in the vicinity and I am for all intents and purposes surrounded by farmland but what I have found is where I'm walking right now and hopefully I've missed the rush hour because it was really busy this morning when I visited this road is this road goes on for quite a way and on both sides are some beautiful hedge banks and it's down here that I'm hoping to try and find some nice macro shots possibly handheld I'm not sure whether it's each actually safe to get the tripod out but um, I want to see what I can find there's all sorts of things there's cow parsley there's, um, there's buttercups there's cock's foot grass there's nettles there's dock um, ferns you name it it's um it's in this this hedge there's burdock there's cleavers and we've got hedgerows with hazel and elm hawthorn oak lots and lots of things to potentially photograph so i'm going to spend about an hour here and then i'm going to head just down the road off to the left there where we found a field of poppies i do apologize for the uh the camera going a little bit dark i've walked from a very bright spot into a dark spot but uh, i'll catch you in a minute so i'm going to be really quick with this and i might even title this film passing place photography because i think it's quite apt um, it's been really quite busy on the road in the last 10 minutes but uh, it seems to have gone quiet now so hopefully that tripod is safe it's in the only passing place in about 100 yards so here it goes just squeeze in what i'm shooting for this first image is the cow parsley but rather than go for a conventional type shot looking down at the heads which i've done before i've also done pictures looking through the heads where i focus through um, part of the plant to something behind her. I thought I'd go for something a little bit different this time. So what I've done, I've set the, um, the camera on 400 ISO so I can hand hold it. I've got the flippy screen out so that I can see it. I'm not looking through the viewfinder and I've got my thumb on the, uh, on, the, on the trigger button so I can hold my camera down like that and I can look at the screen. I've found a nice composition and it's looking in the top part of the flower. This is actually called an umbellifer, um, the cow pass. It's part of a group of plants called umbellifers, of which cauliflower is also part of. So get the camera underneath and just line up the composition that I found, focusing on one in particular flower. I'm on F4, I'm on aperture priority as well because I don't want to be messing around with the light. Can't really afford to do that here. And once I get the flower snapping into sharp focus, grab the shot. And there we go. I've overexposed um, by two stops because I'm photographing against a white sky and the camera on aperture priority will naturally underexpose the shot. So I've overexposed by two shots to make the sky back to white, which is what I want. I've gone for a really high key effect. And like I said, just looking on the underside of the flowers just for something that little bit different. Right, so I'm not going to hang around um, this little spot for much longer. I need to be heading back that way. I've travelled quite a long way down the, uh, down the road and I'm happy that I've seen as much as I need to see. There's a lot of repetition now, so I'm not necessarily walking too far for anything new. Uh, there's plenty to go at walking back and I've already got one shot in the bag. What I'd like to photograph next is one of the grasses um, 
make a nice intimate shot of, of a flowering head of the grasses. There's not a lot of grasses in the hedgerow to, to the untrained eye, I suppose. It would look like there's, there's just lots and lots of different types, but I've only seen four. Um, the first one, and probably the most least common, is this one here, which is the meadow foxtail. Probably not going to have a go with that. It's not overly easy to do, to do great compositions with. Um, one that I might consider is this one here, which is coxfoot. Coxfoot, really common grass, um, very easy to recognise and it gets its name um, because when you turn the flowering head upside down and put it on the palm of your hand, um, there's a little spur that comes away from the main grass and uh, that spur looks like the back of a cockerel's foot and that's where it gets its name. Um, other grasses in here, uh, there are bent grasses. Now I'm not going to attempt to ID those without a hand lens, but um, bent grasses are really tiny, tiny delicate grasses down at the bottom here. The difference between bent grasses and meadow grasses is that um, bent grasses are single flowered when you get them under the hand lens and look at the end of the spikelet, there's only one flower at the end of each panicle. Uh, panicle is that right? Pedicel, sorry, pedicel. The panicle is the whole head. So at the end of the pedicel you've got a single flower, whereas with meadow grasses they are multiple flowered within the within the, the little claspers, the name escapes me now, that hold the flower in, there's only a single flower in each one of those. So that's the difference between bent grasses and meadow grasses. Lastly, this one here, an interesting one. This is false oak grass, and you get this commonly in unmanaged grasslands. So if the grassland hasn't been managed for a long, long time, it hasn't been cut. Um, generally you find that uh, false oak grass starts to proliferate. Um, not a lot of it in here, so I presume it must have been cut at some point, otherwise it'd be everywhere. Um, so there you go, there are the main grasses that I can find and uh, I'm going to have a go at one of those now. So this all became a little bit back to front. Um, I couldn't film the segments of shooting the grasses. There's, it's quite a lot of traffic coming up and down this road but what I was trying to do was similar to the uh, to the cow pass I was trying to do it backlit so look at these nettles just behind me here you see beautiful backlit nettles these are more things that I would definitely have loved to have had a go so you see those amazing um, but I've just not got time I've got to get cracking so I, like I said I was um, had a go at the grasses and I was doing them into the sun. Very, very difficult to find a composition as it turned out. There's a while ago I made a film where I uh, took a picture which included um, a tufted her grass, a uh, close up of one of the spikelets. <coughs> and um, it was really quite successful. And I thought I might be able to do a similar thing with the bent grasses there. But um, the problem is because they're a much smaller grass, the um, the stalks or the pedicels that come out from um, the main part of the, the grass where the flowering heads are on are quite close into the stem and it's difficult separating the vertical stem away from the main interest of the plant. So I took a few, didn't really feel like I nailed it. I was constantly thinking about the sun um, setting and needing to get to this other location quickly. So I'm Look again, look at the cow parsley there, backlit. Really lovely. I've just not got the time tonight to, to be spending too much on it. And like I said, there's been, would you believe it, there's none now, but whilst I've been tucked away trying to photograph just in the last 10, 15 minutes, it's been car after car after car. And um, as they whiz past at probably nigh on, nigh on 60 mile an hour in some, some instances, everything just blows around and you've got to start all over again. Um, so there you go. I'm going to put the best, he says, um, cautiously, the best of the grass pictures on now while I head back. God, look at this light, it's so changeable. One minute I'm, I'm in pitch black and the next minute I'm, I'm burning out with the camera exposure. So I see you down, hopefully, at the poppy field in a, in a snap of a finger. Thank you.
we've just arrived. The light is beautiful. You can see from the uh, right side of my face, the sun is perfect angle for this real spectacle. Beautiful, beautiful scene behind me. That's right in front of me. And look at that. Can you see that? Gorgeous poppy field. Really nice. And a, a nice mature woodland backdrop as well. So let's quickly get set up. The light is already starting to fall uh, with a shadow of a tree going across the field. So I need to be quick. So of course, we photographers are never completely happy, are we? There's no, I think there's such thing as the perfect situation. As you can clearly see with this field, we've got power lines running over the top. So any um, late evening sky is definitely out of the question. But what really drew my eye particularly was um, when I came earlier on was you can see the, I'm, it's difficult to say from this distance, but I'm pretty sure that they are oak trees um, in the distance. You can just see the, the fingers of the gnarly twisted branches just appearing through through the uh, through the foliage there and I wanted to use that as part of my my backdrop to the image um, when I came earlier today it was a little bit more in shed I'm not so sure whether I, I like that full-on directional light um, there's no real modeling it's quite flat the light even though it's complementary in the fact that it's warm light um, the poppy field just looks magnificent um, and I'm reasonably happy with the way, way it looks. One thing that I would have liked to have been able to do, which I can't, is photograph more to the left. And because the sun's directly behind me, my shadow is casting right in front of me on the field. So I can only shoot to the right. The main interest is in that sort of where, where I've talked about the, the trunk, the gnarly trunk, the twisty branches. That's the main um, part of the backdrop for me. And um, my shadow is just out of shot. So I think I've got away with it. I'm doing this as a panoramic because one of the main reasons um, I wanted to shoot this night is because um, Ruth and me was walking um, along the road here today and we spotted this and we just said it would make a lovely, a lovely panoramic print um, for, for one of our rooms in the house and, uh, and that's why I've come to shoot it mainly tonight but I just thought it'd be nice to include it within a video. So. What I've got is I've got the lens set on 120 mil to give me enough top and bottom um, to be able to crop it down. But uh, I'm shooting it with the, the nodal rail attached so that um, I can make stitching relatively easy or very easy. In fact, with the nodal rail um, as I pan from, from left to right. I'm going to do a focus stack um, along with the panoramic because um, I want to include the poppies in, in the foreground nice and sharp and also to get the tree trunks in the background nice and sharp and um, that's probably a tall order um, for a small aperture like f22 plus you, you lose the quality as well so I'm, I'm shooting currently on f16 which is more like f11 it's the sweet on a full frame camera it is the sweet spot for, for a medium format camera and um, I've got some increment markers on my ball and socket head and I'm just moving it one marker at a time so every time I take a shot I move it one marker and then another and when I get to the end I refocus um, for the foreground after I've done the trees and then I move it back at the same increments it just makes it all that that much more easier um, to, uh, to to stitch together in Photoshop later on hopefully I've got it um, the poppies at the moment with the sun coming through them backlit looks really quite nice but I've got to get this quickly because as the sun's dropping it's moving more to the right which is making my shadow go more and more into shot so let's grab this now um, I will not put you through having to wait while I take all the individual frames um, I'll put the finished article on now So let me know in the comments what you thought of that image. But now that the light has gone, the sun has actually gone below a bank of cloud or behind a bank of cloud. 
and we're left with a much more gentle scene. I don't have the problem with my shadow and I really quite like it. It's not what I would call overcast light, it's just very, very soft light that you get at the end of the day or, or very early at the beginning of the day before the sun comes up. It's a really gentle feel to, to, the, to the scene. And I think that a poppy field um, possibly lends itself to that more than the dramatic sunlight, the, the late evening sun. I'm not sure, but um, it'd be nice to compare the two whilst we've got the opportunity. So I'm gonna take it again, I've got a bit more time now. Um, I don't have that mad panic of a rush what I had when I just arrived here in time to get the last shot. So um, I'm gonna do this again as a focus stack. Um, I'm gonna focus for about a third of the way into the frame for the first shot, do the panoramic sweep from left to right, and then go back the other way, focusing about two thirds into the field, which will make the second, the second part of the far end of the, the shot, the distant parts nice and sharp, and, and the trees in the background. The trees, I have to say, they're a bit drab now, there's no sun on them, and, and they're different to how they look this afternoon in the full light of day, so I'm not sure how that'll work, but uh, here goes. Um, First shot, F16, it's all the same settings. Like I say, I focused for just a third into the frame and um, I'll take that first shot now. That's number one. Just one increment. Number two. Number three. And number four. So all I need to do now, um, I could use live view, but I'm not going to do, is just refocus the far end of the field, two thirds of the way into the field, and uh, go back the other way. So I'll put that shot on now. Absolutely beautiful. So you've seen the two variations of the, uh, the panoramic poppy field. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of those. And also the images from earlier this evening, the uh, grasses and um, the cow parsley. It seems like ages ago, but it was only about 45 minutes in total, I think, the whole shoot tonight. But it's uh, been a bit of a quick video, I feel. It's uh, all happened very, very fast and a bit frantic, which uh, Hopefully it doesn't come across too much on the on the film. Sun now just um, just to see, it's actually dropped below that bit of cloud, and there's a lovely evening glow um, and that beautiful um, afterglow on the um, the eastern horizon as the Earth's shadow um, shows against the upper atmosphere. So that's it from me. As always, if you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and uh, be sure to ring the bell for notifications. And again, I do keep saying it, I'm afraid I keep going on about it. There's no join button. Um, you get early bird viewings to videos. You get um, very, very quick responses to your comments and questions. And uh, there's also some discounts available on the website to members. So I'm going to leave it there and uh, start my walk back in a very, very muggy Suffolk. I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.